Today on Applied Science, I'd like to talk about bending wood with a chemical process. So take a look at what we can achieve here. This is a quarter inch walnut dowel that I've tied into a knot. And it's rigid at this point, but it was of course flexible when I tied it into this knot. Uh, here we have a piece of bloodwood, maybe about a sixteenth, almost an eighth of an inch thick, that I bent into a helix. This is an even thicker piece of walnut. Uh, that started to come apart here, but you can see this piece started off almost three-eighths of an inch thick, fairly thick for bending like this. Uh, it also works on maple. This has just been stained by uh, a piece of wood that was laying next to it in the, in the uh, treatment chamber. Uh, I think this is also bloodwood. And this one I sanded down a bit, so you can see that even though a lot of these uh, pieces of wood look sort of uh, nasty on the surface here, it's a result of the treatment. After just a little bit of sanding, it, it's, it looks fine underneath. A lot of people would consider this not really a DIY project because it involves a very hazardous chemical. But of course there's no magic involved, so in this video I'm going to talk about the process. The basic idea is to treat the wood with high pressure ammonia gas. And so to do this we need a pressure chamber that can hold the ammonia and the, it's big enough to contain the wood that we want to bend. So in this case, I'm using Schedule 80 steel pipe. It's important to use uh, a steel vessel or a stainless steel vessel because the ammonia gas will corrode brass and copper fittings. And so all of the valves and fittings and uh, pipe uh, sections that I'm using are all steel or stainless steel. For this project, we only need to take the ammonia gas up to about 150 psi, and so Schedule 80 steel pipe is, is quite overkill for this. I wanted to test a variety of different materials, and so I tried particle board, plywood, a couple different kinds of hardwood, softwood. I also threw in a brass pipe fitting and a piece of copper wire, uh, just to see how bad the corrosion was going to be on those items. And I also tossed in a dollar bill, which I'll talk about later. I added a glass viewport so that I could see if anything interesting was going on during the process inside there, and then sealed everything up. And the next step is to remove the air, because the air is going to get between the ammonia and the wood and, and not um, allow it to react as well. So I used a vacuum pump to pull out as much air as possible. And with a micron gauge, which shows very low levels of vacuum, uh, you'll notice that getting it lower than about 1500 microns will be really difficult, because the water that's in the wood, you know, just naturally in the wood, will start to evaporate and keep the pressure above 1500 microns. So at this point I disconnected the vacuum pump, closed that valve, and then opened the valve that is connected to my tank of anhydrous ammonia. Now we don't need the liquid in this case, really what we want to do is just flow the gas into the chamber, and uh, just keeping the bottle upright and opening the valve will you know, draw the gas out. And uh, you can see it flowing in here, I, I know that the gas that I, this is actually ammonia that I created in a previous video, and it's probably quite wet. There's, there's probably a lot of water vapor mixed in with the ammonia. So you can see as the gas flows into the chamber, uh, it's sort of raining inside there, probably because the water is condensing on the walls. The pressure in the system will depend on the ambient temperature in the room. So the warmer it is, the higher the pressure in the ammonia bottle, and that will make the pressure in the chamber higher. So if you need a little bit more pressure, you can use a hot air gun to heat up the ammonia bottle and uh, get more pressure in, but it's still just gas flowing from the bottle to the chamber. After reaching this pressure, I shut all the valves on the chamber and just let it sit overnight without ever heating the chamber itself, so it was always at ambient temperature. However, I should note it was interesting when the ammonia was added, uh, the chamber itself uh, became hotter all by itself, or it was the process of the ammonia dissolving into the water that's in the wood. And this actually releases quite a bit more heat than you might think. So the, um, the metal pipe, you know, the steel pipe probably got up to about, I don't know, 100 or 110 F, uh, just, just from the reaction of the ammonia going into the water. I removed the wood samples and found that the particle board and plywood didn't work at all. Um, I thought that the plywood might be interesting because the layers would kind of slide past each other, but it doesn't do that at all, it just falls apart. The copper wire and brass fitting were definitely corroded, but uh, it's not like they turned to powder or anything like that. I'll talk about the dollar bill in a future video. And then also, surprisingly, the softwood, which was some kind of pine, uh, didn't really soften that well either, it just snapped. Um, however, the hardwood samples all did pretty well. Um, some of them were uh, quite flexible indeed. 
In order to make the arcs and the helixes, I just wrapped them around a cylindrical object and just clamped it at two points. It really doesn't take much. And um, for the most part, the wood held together. If you bend it too tightly, it will start to snap. Uh, but it's quite flexible. You can easily bend it with just hand strength. After a few hours in the clamped position, the ammonia dissipates and the wood returns to almost its original strength, or it certainly becomes stiff like it originally was. Uh, this makes it really useful, and there's not very much spring back either. So if you put it into the mold and then take it out, uh, you don't really have to compensate very much for the, for the wood springing back to its original shape. The reason that this process works is because the ammonia interferes with the molecular bonding inside the wood. So the thing that gives the wood its structure is lignin and cellulose, which are manufactured by the plant to help give it its structure. And I couldn't find a definitive reference on this, but it seems like the ammonia uh, gets sort of in between the hydrogen bonds that are in the lignin especially. So while the ammonia is there, it's sort of taking the place that those hydrogen bonds normally would between different parts of the lignin molecules. And this means that the molecule can slide past its, uh, the other neighboring lignin molecules. You basically unglued the wood from itself almost. But then once the ammonia leaves, all that hydrogen bonding resumes in its new shape, and now you have a, a stiff piece of wood again in the bent form. A clever person came up with an idea for a product that makes use of this. If you soak a piece of wood in ammonia and then seal it up in a bag, you can sort of sell that whole thing as an object and then the end user can bend it into whatever shape they want, and then they just have to pierce the bag and let the ammonia dissipate, and then they have uh, wood in whatever shape they need. Um, so I'll put a link to the patent in the uh, description of the video. And interestingly, that patent just expired in the last uh, year or two. So you can buy a product now on Inventables that I think uses this process. I haven't bought it myself, and so I don't know for sure. But they market it as uh, bendable wood. Uh, you bend it into whatever shape you want, and then it somehow hardens. And so it might actually be this very process. For those of you who saw my last video in which I made some anhydrous ammonia, you'll recognize this was the pressure tank that I was using at the time. And then someone pointed out in the comments, uh, you know, those tanks aren't welded. That's actually a, a, a brazed seam here. And sure enough, I scraped the paint away and looked at it, and yeah, it's brazed. So the next day I went out to the shop and put this back into the freezer to liquefy what was in here. And I went in with the, uh, the gauge. Actually, I first noticed, hmm, it looks like a lot of the blue paint kind of came off. That's weird. And then I went in here with the uh, gauge or the uh, plug remover and unscrewed it and heard snap. Sure enough, the anhydrous ammonia had corroded the little pin, which is brass, that the uh, safety valve is made from. And uh, under the microscope, you can see it's covered in this really brilliant blue. I actually wiped most of it off, unfortunately. But um, a really interesting sort of ammonia complex there. And so while I was trying to figure out what to do, I kid you not, the freezer stopped working. So at that point I had about an hour to find another container or, you know, throw the ammonia outside or something or run away or, or, or something. So I, I ran around the shop and found this, which is actually an all aluminum high pressure paintball tank. And I, I threaded this on the lathe as quickly as I've ever threaded something and got it all together and then filled this up with the ammonia. So I don't know, I, I tried to find out if um, aluminum is actually sort of an, an okay material to hold anhydrous ammonia and couldn't, I actually found conflicting references uh, on the web. So in any case, this isn't going to be permanent storage. I'll probably use this up and then empty it and, and use the tank for something else. Okay, see you next time. Bye.